We now move on to a statement by Fergus Ewing on the programme to reach 100% access to superfast broadband in Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so that we should know interventions or interruptions. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary, Fergus Ewing, to move and speak to the statement. Sorry. Uh, presiding officer, the announcement in last week's budget that the Scottish Government is committing £600 million to the first phase of the reaching 100% superfast broadband programme is fantastic news for Scotland. I was keen to share the detail of that announcement with Parliament and to reflect on its significance for Scotland's economy. Over the past few weeks, there has been a great deal of conjecture and, quite frankly, disinformation about how Scotland is performing in terms of broadband delivery. This statement is an opportunity, therefore, to set out the facts. And here is the key one, presiding officer. By the end of 2021, Scotland will be the only part of the UK where every single home and business can access superfast broadband. The £600 million announced last week is the biggest public investment ever made in a UK broadband project and launches the first universal superfast programme in the UK. To put that fully into context, it is over double the amount of public funding committed to our current Digital Scotland Superfast Broadband project, that's £280 million, and more than three times bigger than the £190 million fibre fund that the Chancellor announced for the whole of the UK in his recent budget. And it is a programme entirely unique to Scotland. That is a choice the Scottish Government has made Superfast broadband for all. Why is this so crucial to Scotland and why do we need it now? Well, it's simple really. If we want a Scotland that delivers inclusive economic growth, helps businesses in our rural and urban communities to innovate and grow, prepares our children for the workplaces of the future, creates a digitally skilled workforce fit for the digital century and reforms our public services through digital innovation, then we need a future-proofed digital infrastructure. This new procurement will help deliver that, and I will talk more about it in a moment. But first, it is worth reflecting on the truly spectacular progress that has been made in recent years. Our investment, along with that of our partners in the Digital Scotland Superfast Broadband Programme, has genuinely transformed the availability of broadband across the country. Commercial investment alone would have delivered coverage to just 66% of premises, largely, presenting officer, in urban Scotland. Coverage in the Highlands and Islands would have been just 21%, and there was no planned coverage at all in Orkney, Shetland, or the Western Isles. Recognising the unique challenges posed by Scotland's geography, we concluded that a distinct approach was required. Rather than taking forward 32 small-scale procurements at local authority level, we took the joint decision with our local government partners to aggregate planned public investment into two larger regional projects in Scotland. This created a scale that has dwarfed any other project in the UK, extending broadband access to over 800,000 premises. That's 800,000 premises across Scotland so far with further deployment to follow throughout next year. The success of this uh, approach is demonstrated by the coverage figures. Ofcom figures, presiding officer, continue to show that Scotland has made the fastest progress of any of the UK nations in extending superfast access, and we are well on track to meeting our 95% coverage target by the end of this year. So this programme has had a massive impact, but it has not reached everyone. We could have chosen to stop there, as the UK government uh, has done. We could have taken the decision that their USO set at just 10 megabits per second was sufficient for our rural communities, but we didn't. We chose a different path. We concluded that the economic damage which would be caused by consigning large parts of rural and island Scotland to the broadband slow lane, and by extension, the economic slow lane was simply unacceptable. That is why 
even with broadband reserved as it is to Westminster, we have launched the Reaching 100% programme. And it is why, even although the government was only willing to commit £21 million to R100, the Scottish Government has stepped up to ensure a £600 million investment in a vital piece of Scotland's national infrastructure. The procurement uh, presiding officer that was launched last week will build on the success of the DSSB programme, but it will be different in some key respects. <coughs> Unlike the DSSB programme, we plan to make the delivery of new backhaul in particular rural locations a requirement. That will help create a truly national fibre network, ensuring that all parts of Scotland are within reach of accessible fibre. Allowing for currently planned commercial coverage, there are around 245,000 homes and businesses in Scotland which cannot access superfast broadband. This initial investment will deliver superfast access to a significant proportion of those, but we don't expect it to deliver 100% coverage on its own. So there will be further phases through which we will ensure that superfast broadband reaches each and every premise. We expect this to involve a wide range of superfast technologies supported by a national voucher scheme available to individuals and to communities. But the initial phase is the key one, extending a future-proofed accessible fibre network into remote rural areas will provide the essential platform for delivering superfast broadband for all. We are purposely targeting the funds where they're needed most in rural Scotland. So this first phase will not focus on cities. My firm belief is that coverage gaps in urban areas should be filled by commercial suppliers. I'm greatly encouraged by emerging plans from the likes of BT, Virgin Media, City Fibre and Vodafone, amongst others, which suggest that this is beginning to happen. The procurement uh, presiding officer will be split across three regional lots. This is designed to maximize competition. And this is vital to drive both value and innovation. I'm confident that the scale of our investment and of our ambition will attract interest from a wide range of telecoms suppliers across the UK and indeed Europe. This is a huge public investment. It's vital we get the right deal for Scotland. So the procurement will take some time, approximately one year. It is being run as a competitive dialogue and these generally take between 12 to 18 months to complete. We are confident that we will have suppliers in place and ready to start building by early 2019. Currently, broadband activity will continue on the ground between now and then. Alongside extensive commercial activity, the DSSB programme will continue to deliver throughout the coming year with new investment that has been generated by early take-up on the new fibre network. This so-called game share funding plans for new, new deployment in every local authority area across Scotland during next year, avoiding any significant gap between DSSB ending and R100 starting. <coughs> so, much has been achieved over the past three years. The latest Ofcom figures show that superfast coverage in Scotland has increased by 26% Point percentage points since 2014 compared to just 16 for the UK as a whole. But we now want to finish the job. The £600 million investment that we will make is fantastic news for Scotland's rural and island economy and a real statement of the Scottish Government's intent to make Scotland a truly world-class digital nation. This investment will transform the economic prospects of rural Scotland. The fibre network we help build shall be the backbone for delivery of our 100% commitment and beyond that for the future development of Scotland's digital economy. It will underpin a wide range of connectivity services long into the future, 4G and superfast broadband today, 5G and ultra-fast broadband tomorrow. And it will help to drive innovation and growth right across the economy, supporting new business models and industries whilst ensuring that Scotland is competitive in the next digital age. We can be in Scotland a world leader in this digital century, one that's inclusive, innovative, outward looking, driving technological and digital innovation and making Scotland the most attractive place in the UK to invest. 
working alongside Highlands and Islands Enterprise and our local government partners, we have already developed an enviable uh, delivery track record through the DSSB programme, one that has largely bridged the coverage gap between Scotland and the rest of the UK over the past three years. We will now build on that success and through the R100 programme help deliver a future-proofed national fibre network that will place rural Scotland among the best connected places anywhere in Europe and underpin future economic growth. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. I'd urge members who wish to ask a question to press the request to speak button now. We've only got until uh, 2.52, I'm afraid, so I'm conscious that not everybody might get in. I'll call Peter Chapman. Yeah, I thank the presiding officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of, of his statement. The Cabinet Secretary is big on hyperbole today, but the fact is that Scotland is behind England in terms of rollout of superfast broadband. Superfast broadband of more than 30 megabits per second has reached 92% of households in England, but only 87% in Scotland. Also, 6% of premises in Scotland have less than 10 megabits, compared to only 3% in the rest of the UK. And another huge concern is the budget data showing that the spend on digital connectivity for next year is being slashed from 136 million in 2017-18 to only 58.5 million, million in 2018-19, of which only 34 million is capital. So this is certainly not helping to accelerate the rollout. The Cabinet Secretary has stated that suppliers through procurement for R100 will only be in place by early 2019. So my first question is, will next year be a wasted year? And finally, there is great confusion about reaching the 95% target. In page 15 of the draft budget 2018-19, it states, and I quote, by the end of 2017, we will have achieved our existing commitment to deliver fiber access to at least 95% of premises in Scotland. But on page 147, it states, in 2018-19, we will deliver the final phase of the DSSB program, which will extend fibre broadband access to at least 95% of premises across Scotland. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm which is the true statement? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I actually thought that all Scottish MP MSPs would welcome the fact that today I've announced the biggest ever investment yes. uh, in enabling people in rural Scotland and our islands to have superfast broadband. The difference between what we're doing and what Mr Hancock is not doing is that we have a plan. We are investing £600 million, presiding officer, to deliver that plan, as we stated, by the end of 2021, so that everybody can have access to superfast broadband. The, the difference is that uh, our definition of superfast broadband is the conventionally accepted one of uh, 30 megabits per second. But the UK has no such ambition. It, uh, it does not plan to reach everyone, uh, and it uh, believes that the correct speed is 10 megabits per second, uh, not 30 megabits uh, per second. And uh, what is it contributing to the Scottish Government uh, in terms of R100? It is contributing 21 million. 3.5% of the total of 600 million. No, next year will not be a wasted year. As I said in my statement, if you've been listening to it, next year DSSB will continue to deliver to a great many homes on top of commercial delivery. Uh, secondly, the two, the two statistics that you quote are entirely different. One is in respect of delivery of fiber, and one is in respect of delivery of access to superfast broadband. There is a technical distinction, uh, and I suggest that you read the Ofcom Connected Nations report. Finally, the claim, the claim uh, repeated by today that Scotland is three years behind the rest of the UK is simply laughable. The latest Ofcom figures show that the opposite is the truth. Superfast coverage in Scotland over the past uh, three years has increased by 26% compared to 16% for the whole of the UK. And these are, and these are not the Scottish Government figures, they're the figures of the independent regulator, Ofcom. Rhoda Grant. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, we share the Cabinet Secretary's ambition to reach 100% by 2021. However, we're concerned that the Scottish Government will not achieve this and people will be let down. It will take the government at least a year to procure the next phase, so it will be some way into 2019 before a shovel goes in the ground, leaving only 18 months or two years for the most technically difficult areas of Scotland to be reached. Estimates suggest that for the Highlands and Islands alone, it could cost up to 300 million, half the budget allocated. Can I ask if he re realistically believes he will achieve his goal? And given that he has more than half the budget next year how much investment will be invest how much will be invested from gain share um, and added to the budget next year and will you also give the assurance that the availability of a voucher scheme will not be seen as discharging the obligation to the hard to reach areas for 2021 cabinet secretary well uh, we delivered on the digital scotland super fast broadband projects Three years ago, I'm quite sure if you look back through the official report, we could have seen MSPs, opposition MSPs, challenging us then, will you deliver this ambitious project? Uh, will you enable access to over 800,000 homes and businesses in a matter of simply three years? Well, we've done that. So uh, I'm uh, optimistic, uh, and of course, there's lots of hard work to be done. The tender process involves competitive dialogue, and that is to ensure the maximum likelihood of competitive, uh, competitive bids. Uh, I take heart from the encouraging reports from Ofcom, which says that Para 1.7, and this is the most recent report published last week, we recognise there have been significant improvements in mobile and broadband connectivity in recent years. Local authorities in the Highlands and Islands have seen some of the largest increases in superfast broadband availability in the UK. I could read much more. Uh, but the independent regulator recognises that we have done a good job. There's no reason, therefore, I think, to question at this early stage uh, whether we, we, uh, wh why we could not be able to achieve what we have achieved already with DSSB. Uh, I'm acutely conscious that people who do not have such access at the moment will feel bitterly disappointed and, in many cases, angry. Uh, I understand that. And that's precisely why it's so important, presiding officer, that we have a credible plan a plan that uh, will devote substantial resources, the lion's share of which will be devoted to the northern regional bloc, including the Highlands and Islands. And I'm determined that we shall deliver, working with our local authority colleagues, uh, who I have invited to meet uh, fairly early next year to discuss how we go forward. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't share the members' pessimism. Thank you. We have uh, nine members and about eight minutes. Linda Fabiani. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, I recognise uh, the push for cover in rural areas and the difficulties that brings. However, um, there are still gaps within urban areas, for example, in East Kilbride, where it would seem to be due to exchange on the lines or T-Pond technology. This affects domestic, it also affects industrial estates, which is worrying in an industrial town like East Kilbride. Um, the commercial providers do not seem to be covering these gaps uh, because it would seem not to be commercially viable. Um, could the Cabinet Secretary please take this on board and have a word with the commercial suppliers to meet their obligation in urban areas? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, yes, I do regularly meet with the uh, commercial operators and yes, it is primarily the obligation of the commercial operators uh, to meet the needs of the commercial market, not of the taxpayer to displace that investment, but for that to be made by commercial operators with whom uh, we have excellent uh, relations. I would say to Linda Fabiani that the Scottish Government has already passed regulations in respect of building regulations, for example, which require in, this, in respect of new housing developments over, I think, 30 units uh, for there to be provided uh, conduits and ducts providing access for super fast broadband for all new houses to be built. Uh, and of course, this is an area which I discussed with the commercial operators and upon which further work is done. Uh, and yes, I'm happy to uh, speak to her and meet her with regard to the particular challenges that exist to some of her constituents in East Kilbride. Finlay Carson to be followed by Willie Coffey. Thank you, President Officer. 2018-2019 uh, will be a wasted year. Some households and businesses will have to wait until 2022 to get broadband. That's simply not good enough. 
Can the CabSec confirm that the budget for the 2018-2019 has been slashed and only existing money and contractual mechanisms will provide funding? Where is the £600 million in the budget? That will equate to £200 million a year for three years. How is that £600 million made up? Is it all Scottish Government money? Is it UK Government money? Is it private Government money? Could the Cabinet Secretary clarify, please? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, the £600 million is, apart from the pittance provided by Mr Hancock's uh, UK Government of £21 million, the rest of nearly £580 million is provided by the Scottish Government. The UK have provided just 3%, and yet broadband, broadband is a reserved area. A reserved area. We waited for a while, until 2014 in fact, for the UK to fulfil its obligations, presiding officer, on a reserved area. But we waited in vain, and that's why we acted in the Digital Scotland Superfast uh, programme. Uh, now, the member may be interested to know, uh, in relation to the matters that he's raised, that were it not for that contract delivered by the Scottish Government and HIE, in this case the Scottish Government, then the, uh, the, the, the deployment in Dumfries and Galloway uh, of access to superfast broadband uh, as at 2.12 would be 26%. Thanks to the DSSB, it's now at 82.5%. 26% then, after the Scottish Government investment, 82.5%. I would have thought a thank you would be in order from the Tories. Willie Coffey to be followed by David Stewart. Thank you. The, the investment uh, already made by the Scottish Government is certainly appreciated by the 94% of people in East Ayrshire who already have superfast broadband. Could the Cabinet Secretary clarify for us whether the rollout schedule for the R100 programme will be made available to members and the public so that people can have an idea when the service will come their way? Cabinet uh, Secretary. Yes, a very sensible question uh, <coughs> uh, from Mr Coffey. And we have learned from the DSSB programme that one of the things that people and communities wished was to know, if you like, when the access work was to be scheduled for their communities. Uh, therefore, as early as possible, once the procurement process is completed in 2019, we do plan to share uh, the information uh, uh, with the people and communities uh, uh, as quickly as we possibly can, because there is, of course, a desire to know. But next year will not be a year of inactivity. There will be a substantial work carried out by commercial operators and also uh, using the funds provided by the Scottish Government and other public sector uh, providers. And that gain share work will carry on. And also it would not have been possible to proceed earlier with this procurement because had we done so, the only possible bidder would have been BT. Uh, and as it was only possible uh, to determine and describe and define the coverage area, the intervention area, after the DSSB contracts were substantially completed. Uh, so we are proceeding uh, in accordance with, uh, uh, with a plan to invest £600 million in Scotland. Uh, and I, I commend that plan to the member and to his colleagues in London. David Stewart to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Uh, President Officer, what role does the Cabinet Secretary envisage for Highlands and Islands Enterprise and is there a need for novel technological solutions for the difficult to reach last 5%? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, HIE will be playing um, a role in respect of uh, uh, continued delivery of those uh, communities that wish to proceed under the CBS scheme with their own uh, projects in their communities and HIE will be uh, working to deliver that. Although I should say that many of the communities who had been minded to proceed with their own schemes have recently determined that it would be um, better to wait, uh, uh, to better rather to participate in the R100 programme. In regards to the second question, I can confirm that a variety of technologies will be available, not only a satellite, but kind of te technologies involving wireless and even TV white space uh, and using uh, mobile technology in order to provide a signal. Uh, and uh, therefore, there will be a variety of technologies which uh, will be available in order to reach those that we cannot reach through uh, fibre uh, and uh, details of that will be announced in due course. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Emma Harper. <clears throat> Isn't the whole point of the Cabinet Secretary's commitment is to ensure that every household receives at least 30 megabytes per second? 
So is the Minister not aware that in this week's Ofcom's report, only 87%, not 95% of premises have this speed, and by the end of the year, in just 12 days' time, his own target will be missed? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Secretary. Uh, no, that's not the case. The case was to uh, reach 95% in respect of fibre and provide access to superfast uh, uh, broadband and the speed at which the broadband services uh, are available depend, of course, as the member I'm sure will know, on a number of other factors, including what package they get and how the system is rooted in their own particular household or premises. Uh, so that's simply not the case. Uh, and I'm very heartened by the positive verdict of Ofcom. And I notice that the opposition members don't mention it. So here it is here if they want to have a look at it. Uh, Ofcom confirm that Scotland has made more rapid progress in these matters than anywhere else in the UK. Colin Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. I need to remind Chamber I am the PLO to the Cabinet Secretary. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that one of the three region lots included uh, in his statement is uh, south of Scotland? And how many homes and businesses in the south of Scotland will be connected through R100? And how will this approach ensure that areas currently with or without uh, or are far from fibre cabinets, such as near Borg or Kirkubri, will benefit? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, as I mentioned uh, earlier to Mr. Carson, in Dumfries and Galloway, we've moved from 26 to 82 and a half percent. So there has been a lot of progress, but there remain uh, around 26,000 homes and businesses that will be given access under the R100 programme, and we expect that fibre will be central to many of their plans. But as I say, new and emerging technologies could play a role. Thank you. My apologies to Stuart Stevenson, Kate Forbes and Rachel Hamilton, but we have to move on to the next item of business, which is a, state, sorry, a debate on Social Security. We'll just take a few moments for the members and the ministers to change seats.